Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. A few years ago, I took a trip to um, Madagascar. This was when I was in seminary. And um, as we, before we went, we were told we may not go because there's a civil war going on. It wouldn't be the safest environment. But then they said, oh, it broke, we're fine, we're still going to go. So we're on the flight over, and all of a sudden the Civil War breaks out again. So we land in a country, and I, it was weird for me. I land in the airport, and there's like tanks outside. You know, it's like Hotel Rwanda stuff, you know. So we're, we're going through Madagascar, visiting orphanages and hospitals and giving money to little children that needed it. its fun times. But then we're traveling to this village called Fanarasu, and all of a sudden, we're driving down, and there's this huge orange, uh, what, what are those big things? What, dump, dump, uh, like a, what are those called? I'm losing it now. Like a dump truck, but the, like where you throw a lot of garbage. Um, big dump, dumpster, that's it, dumpster. I missed the word, dumpster. Huge orange dumpster in the road, so we stop, and all of a sudden, all these men, like acid people swarm our van. It's freaking me out. And I'm, you know, a fairly large fella. And we're in this little van designed for Malagasy people. Somehow, I found a way to crawl underneath the seat and say, I didn't sign up for this. And one of my buddies, who was a single man who thought he was the funniest thing in the world, looks at me and he said, to live is for Christ and to die is gain. And I'm like, shut up. Be quiet. I don't feel like dying here in Madagascar. I didn't want to die, right? That's why I hid underneath the seat and cried like a little baby. A friend of mine, he's a, he's a missionary in Kenya, he said something very simple and yet very profound. He said, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. No one wants to die. Everyone is afraid in some way, shape, or form of death. I mean, think about it. Some people work out and eat rabbit food so they don't die of a heart attack at 59. Others don't care to lift weights, you know, and they, they don't want to work out a day in their life, and they'd rather eat Mel's five-pound burger challenge than eat a piece of broccoli. So instead of putting death off for a while, they get as much out of life before death comes knocking. Others don't want to even deal with the thought of death, so they numb themselves to the grave with booze and pills. While some still say they don't fear death and dying, and they make death a natural thing, something that just occurs and we need to be accustomed for it. Well, there's a problem with that way of thinking. I'm not Simba, and the church isn't run by Lion King theology like the circle of life. As if death is a natural thing, something that sinful man should meet as a friend. No, death is not a friend, but an enemy that we fight all the way to the grave, using anything we can to avoid it for just one more day. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to die. So repent with me, my friends, for death is our enemy that will defeat us because we are sinful creatures that love this life to the point of death. May the law humble us to confess death for what it is, an enemy of God's children, the sting and the consequence of sin. For no one likes death. You don't get married. I mean, Imagine this on your wedding day, you don't get married saying, Man, I hope my spouse goes first. You don't hold your newborn baby in your arms and ponder what hymns to play for her at her funeral. You don't get off the phone after hearing that your mom or dad is dead and then go to work as if it's just another Tuesday. Death stops you in your tracks. 
It changes your life. It messes everything up and leaves you feeling like someone just shot you in the foot with a nail gun. We don't look forward to our own death, nor do we rejoice in the death of others. Death leaves no joy, only sorrow and tears. My friends, death is, is going to get you too. You can eat all the kale you want and run as many marathons as you want, but death is still going to catch up. You can numb yourself all you want and try to convince yourself that death isn't a scary, scary thing, but man, when that last hour comes, death will sting you and hurt. Death will still come for you. But the bigger problem than death coming is that the devil will preach into your ear that you will die and God will punish you eternally for what you've done. The devil would convince you, as he's been doing for thousands of years, that you're a no-good, dirty, rotten scoundrel who has no place in heaven. He would convince you that you're a sinner, and nothing more than that. Well, my friends, you are a sinner, a selfish transgressor of God's law and His eternal will. But guess what? Jesus came to die for sinners. You and I who fail time and time again at being holy and steadfast. Jesus came and kept the law perfectly because you and I break it perfectly. Jesus came and claimed all your sin is His own, every sin, your original sin, and every sin you've committed and will commit, and He bore that sin. He became the sinner, the sold sinner, that the law accused and cursed. He became the transgressor that the devil tormented. He became every adulterer, blasphemer, sleep in on Sunday, party too hard on Saturday, sinner. Jesus went to the cross as the Son of God, but He also went to the cross as every sinner ever afraid of dying. He went to the cross consumed with the entire world's fear of death, dying, and hell. He went to the cross with all your fear of death and dying. And the best part is, He didn't turn back. He didn't back down, but face death head on for you so that death would lose its power over you. And Jesus didn't back down, but instead beat down death under his feet and crushed the head of the devil to stop his wicked tongue from driving you into despair. On the cross, Jesus claimed all your sin, all your fear, all your terror of death and put it to death by his blood. And he did this so that you may know that you are not just a sinner. You are also, because of his death, and defeat over death in His resurrection, you are also a saint, meaning a holy one set aside for a holy destination. My friends, hear the gospel from the Revelation to St. John that says, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This, this is your destiny, my friends. And Jesus, you are a beloved saint destined for eternal paradise. Isn't that the only thing we should ever say to each other? I mean, really, uh, I guess, I guess uh, this is the fun part about church. Everybody's sinful. But, but you know what's great about church? This could, this could be the best thing. If we just did this, I wouldn't ask for one more paycheck from you ever again. If we could just do this one thing. I'll make a promise right now. No, not for Pastor Daniels. He probably wants to get paid. Probably. I will not get paid one more cent if y'all just say this one phrase to each other over and over again and never sin again against each other. You're going to heaven, brother and sister. I can't wait to go there with you. You're going to heaven, brother and sister. I can't wait to go there with you. You're going to heaven, brother and sister. I can't wait to go with you. This is all it's about.
about, everybody. This is the only thing it's about. You know why I'm going to get paid next week? Because you're not going to do it. But guess what? Even though you don't say it to each other, Jesus says it to you. Isn't that the best thing in the world? Jesus says it to you. That is the only consolation for us. Jesus says, you're going to heaven, my beloved, and I can't wait for you to get here. I can't wait for you to be here. For everybody wants to go to heaven, <laughs> but no one wants to die. But my friends, you're already dead. For in holy baptism, Jesus drowned you. And it's no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives within you. And Christ has mastered death and cast the devil back to hell where he can tempt you no more. My friends, death will come for you, yes, but no longer as the strong foe to terrify you, but as a defeated enemy. Death for you, my friends, you who are claimed by Jesus is nothing more than the portal to life immortal where the saints before you anticipate your arrival with joy. Joy that will never end. Be at peace, my friends. Jesus is waiting for you. The saints before you are waiting for you. And it's going to be one awesome day when you and I will have our home coming in heaven. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.